Okay, so welcome to this tutorial on establishing the pH of readily soluble salts. Now, the problem that we're going to be doing is probably one that you would find in just about any single introductory chemistry um, textbook, and that's going to be establishing the pH of a solution of ammonium chloride. In this case, we're even going to start with a relatively common concentration, 0.10 moles per liter. And we're going to try and figure out what the pH of this solution is. So now hopefully by this point, if you're watching this video, you understand that not all salts, even readily soluble salts, are neutral. So when we analyze this salt here, ammonium chloride, it is readily soluble and it's going to dissociate in a one-to-one -one ratio into ammonium ions and chloride ions. Now you'll notice that this is not an equilibrium equation. This is not the equilibrium that we're analyzing because this is not in equilibrium. It dissociates completely, 100%. So the solution more accurately is represented as ammonium ions and chloride ions and not ammonium chloride. That is, there's no ammonium chloride complex in the solution, only ammonium ions and chloride ions. But if we know the initial concentration of the ammonium chloride, which we do, we then know the initial concentration of the ammonium ion and the chloride ion in that mixture being 0.10 moles per liter in this case. So the next thing that we have to do is probably the most challenging step of the entire process, and that's figuring out which of these two ions is going to impact the pH of our solution. So we have to think about where these ions stem from in terms of their origin, meaning what is the acid and base that must have come together in order to form ammonium chloride. Now in the case of the ammonium ion, it's relatively straightforward to identify. The ammonium ion, as we've already dealt with, is the conjugate acid of ammonia. Now ammonia being a weak base means that its conjugate is going to be strong enough to impact our pH. Again, let's run through that again. Because ammonia, being the source of the ammonium ion in this salt, is a weak base, its conjugate is strong enough to impact the pH. Now, that does not mean it is classified as a strong acid, it just means that it's strong enough to impact our pH. Now the chloride, on the other hand, would very likely have stemmed from hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid, as we know, is a strong acid, which means that its conjugate is not strong enough to impact our pH. So as a result, the only ion that is going to impact our pH out of these two is going to be the ammonium ion. We also know that since it's the conjugate of a weak base, it itself is going to behave as an acid. So this is where our equilibrium starts. Now as we look at this equation that we're analyzing, it's important to note that ammonia is a product of this. There is no ammonia in here right away, or at least initially. It's the ammonium ion in the presence of water. Now all of this is happening simultaneously, but we analyze it as if it's a step-by-step -step procedure. So we're going to treat the ammonia as being zero. It's not a base, it's not in there, and even when it is, it's going to have an extremely low concentration. So our focus, our analysis, is on the ammonium ion. Don't worry about the impact that ammonia is going to have. So now we set this up as we do any other ice table. Now the ammonium ion concentration is going to be 0.10. Remember, the ammonium ion is sourced from or stems from the dissociation of the ammonium chloride in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if we know the concentration of the ammonium chloride, we know the initial concentration of the ammonium ion in this case. Now remember water, we're not going to count it here because there's just too much of it. The initial concentration of both of these product ions are going to be treated as zero. The only place for this to go is down. The only place for these concentrations to go is up. So you're going to notice that this table sets up very similar to just about every other acid-base table that you might come across in terms of weak acid or base analysis, and we have our equilibrium concentrations. Now we should note that this is behaving as an acid, but again if you look up in your reference packages you will see that we don't have readily available values for conjugates. So we're going to have to figure out what the Ka is of the ammonium ion. So in order for us to figure out the Ka of the ammonium ion, we are going to have to use the Kw value and the Kb for the conjugate of ammonium ion, which is ammonia. So again, we can use our reference package or our appendices to figure out the Kb for ammonia. In doing so, you find a value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And in completing this calculation, we've got a Ka that's pretty low, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. We take a look at this Ka for this value. It is low. Uh, our concentration is relatively high. So what that's going to let us know is that this is going to ionize um, a relatively small amount. So our x value is going to be pretty low, which means that we probably can, and will, perform our test. Remember our test is our initial concentration over the K. In this case it's going to be our Ka. So our initial concentration is 0.10. It is going to be over 
5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Again, make sure that you are using the Ka for this, not the Kb. And I'm not even going to go through this calculation. Look at the value of the denominator. It's extremely small. I know just by eyeballing this, it's going to be way larger than 500. So what that tells me now is my test is valid, and I can make my calculations a lot easier by negating x. Okay, so now that we have our Ka and our tests out of the way to make our calculations a lot easier, it's just a matter of putting all of these relationships that we have for the equilibrium concentrations into our Ka expression. So our Ka expression is like any other equilibrium expression. It is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So again, notice that for the denominator, we are only including the concentration of the ammonium ion in here. We are not including water because it's not appreciably going to change being the primary solvent in which this reaction takes place. And now it's just a matter of plugging in our values. So we can see that our product values are both going to be x divided by the reactant value 0 decimal 1, 0. Again, it's not appreciably going to change. Our x value is going to be extremely small. And then we have the Ka that we've just calculated in there as well. Now I'm going to simplify this, solving for x squared. Again, I like to move my x values, or at least the variables I'm looking for, to the left side of the equal sign. And then I am going to take the product of the Ka and the initial concentration. And ultimately, to solve this, I'm going to have to take the square root of that value. And in doing so, I'm going to get a value for x of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6. So that is my value for x. Now, if we take a look to our ice table, we know that this value for x also represents the concentration of the hydronium ion. Now that's going to help us when we try and figure out the pH of this salt. It's going to be the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. It's important to note that if this was a basic salt, x would probably be equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and we'd have to figure out pOH before we figured out pH. That is not the case here though. We have an acidic salt, so we have to figure out the pH. And it works out to be 5.13. Again, that is our value to the appropriate number of significant figures, in this case 2, because as we know, only the numbers to the right of the decimal are considered significant when we're dealing with pH. So as we take a look at this now, we can see that in fact, this is not a neutral salt. It is what we would classify as an acidic salt, which is not surprising, given that the ion that is going to impact the pH of this solution is the conjugate of a weak base. And in doing so, we can actually quantify this and calculate and confirm that not only is it acidic, but it has, at least at this concentration, a pH of 5.13. So hopefully after watching this, you have a better idea of how to go through and calculate and solve for the pH of a non-neutral salt. That is a salt that is produced from a reaction between a weak acid or base uh, combined with a strong acid or base. Thanks for watching.